Let's rewind time. Go back to the year 2012, the senior season of prime Tavon Austin. Keep in mind, this is NCAA 13, so the attributes you see on screen are not altered, changed in any way. These are what they gave him for that specific year. So today, we're going to play through Tavon's full senior season, try to put up better numbers than he did that season, win him a Heisman Trophy, and try our absolute best to lead West Virginia to a national championship. Down here in the red zone, second and nine, midway through the first quarter, Tavon will secure his first receiving touchdown of the 2012 season. Here on a ridiculous third and 21, Tavon gets bullied at the line, but this catch in the end zone would make up for all of that. He goes up top to secure another touchdown for West Virginia, but he wouldn't have a problem getting off the line again. Then he goes up top and makes a nasty head tap and catch on this defender, and that elite speed that he possesses puts him in the end zone for the third time in the first half. Showing out is an understatement. This man is straight up embarrassing this defense. He goes crazy, burns this man at the line, goes up top to high point this ball, comes down with his fourth touchdown of the first half. Y'all know in his prime, Tavon was known to go crazy in the return game. So here before the second half, he's going to get involved, picking up a pretty decent return. The sun has gone down a little bit, but so has the morale of Marshall. But Tavon, he's going crazy having an amazing day. With this catch, he's going to break a school record for the most receiving yards in a single game. Don't ask me why. This man completely disregards his route, but obviously him and his quarterback are on the same page because he puts it exactly where it needs to be, and somehow he high points this ball with extreme accuracy. 12 for 262 and 5 touchdowns. To say the least, this season is about to be hectic statistically for Tavon Austin. FCS East, FCS East. If this man doesn't put up astronomical numbers against FCS East, we're going to have a problem. I got a feeling we're going to see a lot of off script plays between Tavon and Geno because they continue to do it and it's working to perfection just about every time so far. Even in game, Tavon's elite speed shines bright. He gave this DB a slight step inside, got back out, and he just completely burned him for another touchdown here in the first half. Already having a dominating lead here in the second quarter. Now this man is back here stealing kick returns. And when he got this little bit of space, he made something happen. Got multiple guys missing, going crazy, getting freaky. I love the way Geno's throwing the ball. Leading Tavon in the open space, allowing him to keep his forward momentum. They're already looking like the most dynamic duo of the season. A 52-point win over FCS East, which was expected, but another 200-yard performance. Let's see if the Mountaineers can keep this momentum up. Week three, they're ranked number five in the country, and they got the Terps this week. And of course, to kick this one off, we're gonna see five foot eight Tavon high pointing these balls like he's six five. This is probably one of the craziest plays I've ever seen. Gino put this ball in the traffic, but Tavon to spin around, stoop all the way down to the ground, make this catch. This man is not human, bro. Man, for this DB to not get a jam at the line on Tavon, then stand his back pedal for as long as he did, he deserved to get toasted on this route. But he does have elite speed. He almost hawked him down. And somehow, early in the third quarter, the Mountaineers find themselves down 11 points to the Turks. But of course, if this man has something to say about it, it wouldn't be like that for long. And somehow, here in the fourth quarter, they find themselves down 11 points again, which is crazy. But this lob pass over the top by Geno, absolutely beautiful. And the catch, right in the bucket. It's a tie ball game. Just over a minute left here in the fourth. Tavon is going to be wide open, but Geno is going to put this ball in the back of the end zone. They're going to pick up the touchdown, and they're going to pick up the win. For Tavon to have less than 10 receptions, but nearly 300 yards for three consecutive games is one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Hold on now, I wasn't expecting this out of a 5'8", 174-pound receiver going up top and holding on to this ball through contact. I don't know what it is, but when these corners have help over the top, they don't feel the need to press at the line, which is a huge mistake. That allows them to pick up a walk-in touchdown and take the lead here early in the second quarter. But of course, when they do decide to press at the line, it's man coverage and there's no safety help over the top, which is going to land this DB in a terrible position and Tavon with another big catch. So far, throughout the first half, it's been a pretty close game, but Tavon's going to extend this lead with a nice but easy catch across the middle for his second touchdown of the game. And somehow they get the ball back with less than a minute left in the first half, and of course, Tavon and his offense is going to capitalize on this opportunity and pick up another touchdown. And I don't know what happened from the first half to the second, but this defense has completely fallen apart. But one thing about this West Virginia offense, they continue to dominate. And Tavon breaks another school record. And even though they're up 11 points here in the fourth quarter, Tavon's going to keep his foot on the gas, picking up another touchdown, putting this game completely out of reach. 
They got the number 13 ranked Longhorns on the road this week in these beautiful alternate uniforms, and he's going to start this game off flipping his way into the end zone. Pressed at the line and there's help over the top, you think this play would be over for Tavon. But instead, the safety makes the worst decision of his life biting on the inside route, and he picks up another touchdown. It's almost guaranteed. Every time he has a go route, he's going to go crazy and make a big play. This DB had a chance to make a tackle, screwed it up, and Tavon dives into the end zone for another one. I know we haven't seen much of it, but Tavon's going to get active in the return game. Just under a minute and a half left here in the fourth with just a two-point lead, they'll set up shop around the 30. And with that, they'll make their way into the end zone, picking up a huge win on the road here against the Longhorns, a shootout at that. And somehow he just continues to put up these astronomical numbers with very limited receptions. I don't know how he does it, but he's a big play machine. Surprisingly, a very uneventful first quarter for the boy. But here late in the second quarter, he finally get active picking up a huge play. Down here in the red zone, after pretty much getting locked up throughout this entire route, him and Gino will go off script once again and pick up a touchdown, their first of the entire first half. Those first three quarters for Tavon himself were completely uneventful, boring, dead. He's been getting damn near doubled the entire game thus far. He pick up a big play here, but I think he's starting to be gassed. He might need a bye week. And even though he's a prime athlete, even the best get tired. And I think these last couple of games, he's been giving it so much of his all, he might need to take a step back. Hey, I know it might be a little repetitive, but it's a goal route bonanza. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. He picks up his third touchdown of the day, continuing to dominate, even though he had a slow start. We've seen him so far this season have some decent returns. Over here would be his best yet. He would go crazy, navigating his way through traffic, great blocks up front. He almost took it back to the crib. Another game, putting up well over 200 yards receiving, three plus touchdowns. He had two drops this game, but nonetheless, he balled out and they secured another win. KSU being ranked number eight in the country just feels wrong, but I guess they were a good team back then. But you want to know what is great? This catch by Tavon. This DB thought he had him when he bit on this curl route so hard, which he should have. But Tavon took the opportunity, ran up field, made the catch, and in the end zone, he goes. For the most part, we've seen Tavon catch the ball and just take off towards the end zone. But this play here made this catch through a guy and then made a guy miss with a nasty spin move in limited space. Great play. I guess we all kind of underestimated KSU. At the crib, down damn near 20 points is absolutely crazy. But of course, Tavon's going to do everything he can to try to shorten that gap. I didn't think it would happen like this against this team at home, but West Virginia takes their first loss of the season. Now, West Virginia has an explosive offense and a pretty decent defense, but for them to give up 45 points at the crib is outrageous. Tavon did what he does best, puts up over 200 yards receiving, but it just wasn't enough. That goal route with no help over the top is gold, especially when you can sell a route this well inside. The DB did a full 360 before he knew what was going on. He's been doing this thing in the return game this season thus far, but his best play would be right here. Navigating his way through traffic, outrunning every defender, he takes this one back 101 yards. A new record. Being down two possessions just before the second half, Tavon could possibly smell their second consecutive L, but he's not going for it. Big catch all the way into the end zone for a touchdown. That man is on straight business today. Now down one possession, two defensive backs stacked on top of each other for whatever reason, trying to create some kind of illusion or I don't know what they're doing, but a go route for the win every single time and never fails. And we got to take a moment to give Gino his credit, his props, his kudos, a perfect ball in stride to Tavon, turns it up field, gets into the end zone, and they take the lead. And it's crazy, going from number two to number seven in the country and now losing to an unranked team. This defense allowed 55 points. Offense balled out, put up there near 50. But 55, this defense got to step up. Make that eight consecutive games where Tavon Austin has put up 200 or more receiving yards, at least two touchdowns. He's unstoppable, but somehow they lose their second straight game. Now, even though he's not known to be a red zone monster here in the snow against Oklahoma State, he's still going to get it done even in short distance. The precision it takes to keep this ball in bounds, put it in perfect place for Tavon to make this catch. Beautiful ball, by the way. It soared so perfectly in the air. Then to make his win to the end zone, one of the best plays of the season thus far. A go route after he sells it inside so well to absolutely destroy these defensive backs. It's going to go for it every time. Top ball game here in the fourth with three minutes left on the clock. And somehow this play isn't under review. I don't know how he got one foot in, but the refs like it. I love it. And of course, after a much-needed touchdown coming off of two back-to-back -to -back L's, Tavon's teammates are loving it right now. 
But the game isn't over. Just over a minute and a half left. Tavon will pick up yet another touchdown, making sure this game is completely out of reach, snapping their two-game losing streak. And to think, for a short period of time, this was the number two ranked team in the country. And now this week, at home, they have number seven ranked Oklahoma. I don't know what it is, but when they're down anything, whether it's a point, two, three, a touchdown or more, it does not matter. This man shows up, shows out, and he puts points on their board every single time. He really is an underdog type player. But hey, I guess when you're that undersized playing against top tier D1 talent, you have to ball out with a chip on your shoulder and be kind of the underdog. Have that mentality. Even though it seems like this Oklahoma defense came out to do everything they possibly could to stop them from going over top, they just find holes in the defense, expose them, and pick up touchdowns. To see this offense perform at the highest level, probably the best in the country thus far, averaging the most points of any other team, but this defense has to be last in points allowed. My gosh! A five-point lead late in the fourth quarter. This man gonna go crazy. Big blocks up front, great navigation through traffic, taking up the numbers, going crazy, picking up the game, ceiling touchdown. Hands down, the best performance, probably in the history of college football. Over 300 receiving yards, seven total touchdowns. He went crazy. There's nothing else to say. He went. He just went crazy. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Iowa, which is kind of odd to say, but what's even more beautiful is this head-tapping catch on the second play from scrimmage, breaking the tackle, getting into the end zone. Go off then. A beautiful release at the line, and this safety doing God knows what leaves Tavon wide open and unfazed in the end zone for a tug. A curl route? No. A streak? Yes. Tavon is stride for stride the entire way through this DB. He pulls away just enough to make the catch and secure a touchdown. At this point, I think they're just doing what works. Tavon is completely going off script pretty much every single play, doing what he wants, but he finds open space and finds his way into the end zone. It just doesn't stop. But obviously, nobody on that West Virginia sideline has a problem with it. He literally, single-handedly dominated this game. And the defense actually did pretty good today, only allowing 24 points, which is still a lot, but better than usual. You thought last week he went crazy? Over 350 receiving yards, under 10 receptions, 5 touchdowns, 0 drops, dominating performance. That was nasty. I think it's safe to say, for the first time this entire season, we get to watch this man run a route to perfection. He kind of cut it a little short, but he ran it, made the catch, and took it to the crib here in the first quarter. Final game of the season, you know he finna get active in the return game, taking this kickoff, I think about 90 yards, if not more, up the sideline, all the way to the crib. We have all know he's been gifted and special, but this was just outrageous. Dumb boys out here in the snow looking like some shining, bright bananas, man, but double help over the top it seems to be. And it doesn't matter. He goes up in the end zone wide open, somewhat wide open, for a touchdown. I believe the number 26 is cursed. Not because of anything I've seen consistently or any string of events, but to get head tapped like this, allow your man to take off and embarrass you and walk us to the end zone like that, get him out of here. Like I said before, it's the final game of the season. And this man knows that he is going absolute crazy. Two of them? I think he's only had two the entire season up to this game, but now he takes two back to the crib in the kickoff game in one game. Even though we're seeing a bunch of things out of the norm this game, him going off script with his routes, oh, that'll never go anywhere for nothing or nobody. It's official, it's stamped, it's sealed. This man, Tavon Austin, with an entire 12-game season, not one game where he went under 200 yards receiving a master. And of course, when you're putting up numbers like that on a week-to-week -week basis, you have no choice but to be named the Heisman Trophy winner. One of few goals we set out for the season. And when you put up numbers of this caliber, nearly 100 receptions, over 3,100 receiving yards, 40-plus touchdowns, you have no choice but to win every single award that you qualify for. Incredibly great senior season with prime Tavon Austin. No national championship, not even a conference championship, but he did win that Heisman Trophy and just about every award you could think of. I think it's safe to say we can deem this one a success.